the law is that first, when it passed in 1977, for every child up to age four be in a child car seat. They were to be in seats in the back seat facing rearward. I think facing rearward was in the original law up to the fourth birthday or to a certain number of pounds that the child weighed. So that was the first. He got on that task force that the governor set up about highway safety, mm -hmm. Governor Ray Blanton, and there was a man named Ed Casey, and he was in solid waste in public health. He was not in safety or anything to do with public health, essentially, except solid waste. He had this idea that came out of the Bible, essentially protecting children who have no choice. And it was like something on the rooftops. It was a it real interesting passage, and I got him to write it all out for me. So he said, you know, it'd be good if we could have a law to have children in car seats and require them up to age four. So that's where the idea got started with Ed Casey and Bob and some of those people. They presented it to the commissioner, Gene Fowinkle, public health commissioner. They had a committee. They voted it down three to two. They didn't think it should be an administration bill. but they got the green light from the commissioner, Fowinkle. You do what you can. You have my full permission. You do any phoning you need to do. You get grassroots lobbying. Do what you can. Well, he presented it to the Tennessee Pediatric Society, and uh, John Siegenthaler, who was the publisher of the Tennessean, uh, was at the meeting. It was a dinner meeting. And the next day, he came up to us and said, um, Come see me at the Tennessee, and I want to endorse this. I want to, I want to promote this because he liked it. And Anne Marie Shellness had been working on this as a, uh, a helper. She wasn't really a physician <clears throat> about children being uh, neglected on the nation's highways, and she worked with a pediatrician named Seymour Charles. And that article really hit him. That was the fall of '75. But before that, in the fall of 74, we went out to San Francisco to an American Academy of Pediatrics meeting, mm -hmm. and Ralph Nader was the speaker. And he talked about hazards. And then that's what led him to thinking about the highway, number one killer. He thought, go after the number one killer. It's like a vaccine, he felt. You, wear, you, you have a car seat, that's the best you can do. But the thing that failed it in, in 76 was uh, Representative Roscoe Pickering, who said, the happiest day of my daughter's life was bringing a baby home in her arms from the hospital. So he had an amendment that was very bad called the Babes in Arms Amendment. And we later, when we, we went back and worked with other people to get the amendment out, we were calling it the Child Crusher Amendment because something had happened where a baby was crushed by the mother up against the dashboard. Mm -hmm. Sherry Chapel had a child. She grew up in Murfreesboro. She had a child in the back seat, in his car seat, and a sleepy driver came and hit her on Manny Avenue right here in Murfreesboro, twirled her car around. When she came to a stop, the little boy, a toddler, like 18 months, 15 months, was crying, which is a good, happy thing to hear. Mm -hmm. He was not hurt. He was in his seat, but her sandal wound up in the back seat, and she was not hurt, luckily. But she testified to get that amendment out, the crusher, Child Crusher Amendment, Babes in Arms Amendment. And Larry Daughtry, who just died a couple years ago, he did it on the front page of the Tennessean, lucky and unlucky. And the unlucky was the mother that crushed her child mm -hmm. against the dashboard. Wow. But we walked into John Bragg's office. That was our home away from home. And he was standing there and saying, I just got a letter from somebody in Springfield, Tennessee. that says, I have the right to take my child and put it in a rocket to the moon if I so choose. Like they own their wives, they own their babies. And that mentality 
was strong. Senator Byrd was from Cleveland, Tennessee, and he had witnessed news about a child that was killed, two-year-old Militia Gibson, by her stepfather. I mean, tortured and killed. That child had no choice. And that's when he kept getting that point across, that you've got to protect children. Evening news, because there was a car crash near Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, everyone killed except one person who was in a car seat. Wow. The mother, the grandmother, the siblings, it was horrible. And that got their attention that, sure enough, these car seats worked. And I don't know if he was rearward facing or not, but that was on CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite because they thought it was pretty dramatic, and it was dramatic. But he was always thinking about precaution and, and things that could prevent. He was just perfect for going into preventive medicine, into public health, which he didn't do. He went into virology, and he went to Sweden to do newborn physiology, and he he came back and he was doing that and we went to Chapel Hill, we got married and he was doing research in um, virology with guinea pigs and hamsters and giving them viruses and he didn't like that. I mean he just wanted to be a clinical pediatrician more so he practiced almost three years here in Murfreesboro alone and that was not going to work. So he got into public health luckily.